Hello there. My name is your first time being here. Please um, subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends, and then uh, we can always learn together. Uh, today I'm here to talk about um, cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is one of the most common cancers among the women. And January being Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, uh, maybe we can learn a few one or two things together. So um, globally, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer among women. However, um, when you narrow it down to low and middle income countries, it is actually far, far, far higher. It is in the top two positions, okay? And uh, most of the cancer deaths around, around the world due to cervical cancer actually happen in the low and middle income countries, including Uganda, where I come from. And that counts for around 94%. And um, one thing that we'd also notice that this cancer affects more people who are immunosuppressed for example, people living with HIV are six times more likely to have cervical cancer as compared to women who do not have HIV. Cervical cancer is caused by um, a virus which is, we call human papilloma virus or HPV virus. And this virus is uh, sexually transmitted, okay? So um, all people who are sexually active, they will actually have this virus at one point in their lifetime but the body is able to actually clear out this virus. The immune system is able to clear out this virus. So most people will not actually have symptoms and they will not develop symptoms uh, due to this uh, HPV. However, there are different strains of HPV. Uh, we have some strains like 16, 18, which are actually highly virulent and uh, they can easily uh, infect your cells and make them transform into abnormal cells and these cells will eventually uh, grow into uh, the cancer, okay? So, first of all, what we call the cervix, that is, uh, in simple terms, that mouth or that first part of the uterus, okay? So, the cervix lies between the uterus and the vagina. So, what HPV does is that it affects, or it, infect, it comes and colonizes these cells at the cervix, and then it causes a transformation uh, of the normal cells into abnormal cells that eventually proliferate to become a cancer cells like i've told you um everyone who is sexually active will actually have this virus at one point in their lifetime but does not necessarily mean that they will develop cancer and the body usually clears it out however the persistent uh, hpv that remains and fails to be clear in the body is responsible for around 95 percent of the cases of cervical cancer so some of the risk factors for developing cervical cancer include the following one is uh, we're going to look at the immune status of the person. Like I've told you, people who are HIV positive or who are immunocompromised, um, six times more likely to have uh, uh, the cervical cancer as compared to people who are not uh, immunocompromised, okay? And then to the strain of the, of the HPV that you get also plays a very important, a very critical role. And like I've told you, there are some strains which are highly virulent as compared to others. Number three, um, smoking cigarettes is one of the very key risk factors for developing cervical cancer. Early age uh, for the first sex, okay, and then early age at which uh, for the past, for the first pregnancy, having other sexual transmitted infections, including HIV, but as well as other STIs. Use of hormonal contraceptives is also among the risk factors that have been identified for cervical cancer. So what are some of the symptoms uh, or what are some of the signs that you see and you know that someone could be having cancer? To start with, uh, after infection with HPV, it takes close to 10 to 15 years before someone can actually develop the symptoms or develop the cancer, okay? Uh, and in the immunocompromised, those are people who are living with HIV, it takes about 5 to 10 years before someone can actually have symptoms of developing cancer. So there's what we call that precancerous stage, and most times um, there will be no symptoms that are visible. Okay, so you, are, so you don't need to wait for symptoms for you to actually take precautionary measures. You have vaginal bleeding. So in case you're experiencing some bit of abnormal vaginal bleeding, which might come, for example, in between the periods, or vaginal bleeding that comes every after having sex, or when you're in menopause, but then eventually or suddenly you start having vaginal bleeding it could be a sign that you may be developing cervical cancer. When there is an increased foul-smelling vaginal discharge, like you're having some really bad discharge that is coming out, 
and the smell is very bad in case you're having some persistent symptoms for example like persistent back pain pain in the legs pain in the pelvis which is persistent and uh, you've tried managing it but it's not resolving but you can't identify any other cause you might need to go and get checked for possible um, risk for cervical cancer symptoms like weight loss uh, fatigue and uh, loss of appetite are also some of the common common things that you have to look out for vaginal discomfort swelling in the legs could also be one of the key symptoms uh, cervical cancer can be managed it can be easily managed uh, that's if it is caught at an early stage okay it can be managed and fully cured however it is not so easy so if you come in a bit late it might come at an advanced stage whereby uh, management might not be possible to fully cure it uh, but some of the management options that we have we have surgery chemotherapy we have radiotherapy those are some of the most common uh, management options that we have which we can use to try and manage this we have what we call palliative care palliative care that's when we give supportive management to someone where maybe we might not be able to reverse the condition but we are basically supporting you so we manage your pain uh, some people having cancer they tend to have things like anemia so we try to manage your blood levels to just make sure that we make you have a comfortable and good life and transition through that process of cancer until maybe when um, God decides otherwise. Uh, as part of the prevention, one of the things that we recommend so much is uh, screening, routine screening. And we encourage uh, women to get screened starting from the age of 30 for those who are not immunocompromised uh, and do this every after five years. By the time you make 35 years, you must have a minimum of at least two cervical cancer screenings done, okay? Uh, but you can do this every after three years uh, if possible. And then uh, for the women who are living with HIV, we recommend screening to start as early as 25 years of age and this to be done every after three years. So uh, during the screening, in case we identify some abnormal uh, changes taking place at your cervix, we are able to actually do some management and arrest those cells before they proliferate to become cancerous. There are some of the management, uh, uh, management options for the precancerous lesions that we have. One of them is called thermal ablation, whereby we burn off those cells, those uh, abnormal cells or the precancerous cells before they can fully transform into cancerous cells. And then we also have what we call cryotherapy, whereby we freeze those cells and they can't uh, proliferate any further. So that's why uh, routine screening is actually important, even if you have been vaccinated. Immunization or vaccinations for, for uh, human papilloma virus, that is HPV, okay? So all the children who are aged uh, between uh, uh, for, uh, 9 to 14 years, they should actually be vaccinated against uh, uh, HPV. And we're looking at that age category because they have not yet become sexually active most of the times. But being protected or being vaccinated does not mean that you should not screen once you reach the age where we recommend a routine screening. Use a condom. I would recommend uh, abstinence until an age whereby someone is adult enough. If you are a man, we recommend undergoing safe male circumcision or voluntary safe male circumcision. So if you are a parent and you have your, your boys, please make sure that you have them vaccinated. Uh, because it's most times the men who actually move this HPV from one person to another. In case you've been a smoker, please stop smoking because like I told you, smoking increases the risk by uh, a number of folds for you to actually have cervical cancer. Try to be faithful to your partner, have one person. Well, the moment you move around or the more you move around, you're most likely to gather a number of things from wherever you will be going and you're going to bring them back to the person that you're leaving home. So I believe you picked something and in case you want to reach out to learn more about this, my number is 0756 714791. Screening, screening, and the screening is the key to avoiding deaths which are due to cervical cancer.